Welcome to the Genealogy Gems Podcast, providing quick and innovative ways to make the absolute most out of your research time and creative ideas for sharing and displaying your family history. I'm your host, Lisa Louise Cook. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 24. I'm coming up for air from putting the finishing touches on my new book. Um, you know, it's been a really big job, and I wasn't sure if I was going to have time uh, this month to be able to get my weekly podcast out. Um, and though I'm really excited about the book, I admit it, I just can't stay away from the microphone and, and getting my chance to chat with you guys. You've all grown on me, that's for sure. So here I am. And there's been a lot going on this week, family history wise, and we don't want to get behind, right? So first, it looks like the National Archives and Records Administration has taken the leap and they've raised their record reproduction fees. I think we knew this was coming. But uh, the new fees don't become effective until October 1st of 2007. So you've got a window of opportunity here to order some records at the old lower prices. It's a substantial increase, but the first one in about seven years. For instance, a full pension file, more than 75 years old, up to 100 pages is now $75. And passenger arrival lists will be $25. And it looks like they've also raised their self-serving photocopy rates um, up to 25 cents per page in the D.C. area and 20 cents at regional archives. And NARA-made copies will be 75 cents per page. You can find a list of records and prices on their website, and I'll have a link for you to that website in the episode 24 show notes. Also from NARA... Coming this week is a new podcast series called Presidential Archives Uncovered, and it's based on the Presidential Timeline website, which gives you access to the digitized materials from the collections of the 12 presidential libraries of the National Archives. And I'll have a link for that website in, your, in the show notes as well. Presidential Archives Uncovered broadcasts audio clips, and they're ranging from the serious policy discussions between the president and his advisors to conversations just kind of among the presidential family members. And it looks like they're going to be adding a new clip um, on a monthly basis. So you can access the audio podcast from their website, or you can actually go into iTunes as well and subscribe to it from there. And again, I'll have a link for you in the show notes. Now I'm wondering if you have started working on your first family history book yet. Remember, I walked you through the steps in episode 13 on how to put together a professional-looking book that highlights an ancestor in your family. Well, the company I use to produce the, my books, uh, Kodak Gallery, can also help you create other terrific items. And through an arrangement with Kodak, I've got a special discount available for you to create a personalized calendar. And, you know, I was just thinking that with fall approaching and we're all starting to think about, okay... Hang on here, I'm going to say it. Christmas shopping? Yes, yes, I've been thinking about Christmas shopping because uh, if we're going to be making anything really cool for our family, we're going to have to get started now, right? Because these things take some time. Well, I think a family history calendar with each month highlighting an ancestor would be amazing. And it'd be a great gift for family members. And it maybe kind of help educate them as to uh, who is in their family tree. And don't worry, you don't have to have a photograph of every single ancestor. You know, maybe you want to highlight a Revolutionary War ancestor. You may not have his photograph, but you might have a photograph of the family farm that he lived on or perhaps a battlefield that he fought on. So you get the idea. Well, go to the Genealogy Gems website today to the resources page, and there you will find a link for a 25% discount on a Kodak Gallery personalized calendar. And uh, they're beautiful, and they make a really thoughtful gift. So um, check that out. I think it's going to be for a limited time, but the link will be there on the resources page for you. And speaking of creating the family history book, my new book, Genealogy Gems, Ultimate Research Strategies from Season 1 of the Genealogy Gems podcast will be out very soon. Did you notice I changed the name? You know, I was thinking about it, and I thought, you know... These um, ideas and tips that I'm putting in the book, um, you don't have to have listened to the podcast first to be able to take advantage of them. And hopefully, 
um, perhaps as people become familiar with the book, they may come check out the podcast. So I didn't want to scare anybody off by saying, you know, it's a guide to the podcast and you have to listen to it along the way. So it's called uh, Genealogy Gems, Ultimate Research Strategies from Season 1 of the Genealogy Gems podcast. And in it, you will find step-by-step details from Episode 13 uh, on how to create that family history book that I mentioned. I don't have the exact publish date yet for you, but let's just say it's very soon. (laughs) I've got a little update on the uh, homepage of the website that will let you know the moment it's available. So that's coming up. Okay, when we come back, the mailbox. I got a note this week from alert listener Diana Larson. And she was asking about the book that I mentioned in episode 19 called Papa's Way. Except it's not called Papa's Way. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Uh, it's called Papa's Wife. And Diana was out there scouring eBay and it didn't exist. I was actually thinking of Thyra Fiera Bjorn's other wonderful book, Mama's Way. So I think I melded the two together in my, in my brain. So Diana, thank you for bringing that to my attention. And I have corrected the episode 19 show notes book list. Oh, and you got to check out the photos that Diana sent me uh, that are included in the episode 22 show notes. If you haven't already, they are of a beautiful family history display that uh, she received from her aunt. So check that out. And here's another Swedish book recommendation that I received from Anna Corinne Shander, who lives in Sweden. And she is the host of Anna Corinne's genealogical podcast. The book is called The Immigrants, and it's by Wilhelm Moberg. I think it's part of a wonderful series called The Immigrant Novels. And it's a series of of immigrant books that uh, Moberg wrote. And I'll have a link for you in the show notes to where you can get a copy of the book. Now, I trust Anna Corinne on this, and I have already ordered my copy. (laughs) Um, with fall coming, doesn't it really just sound wonderful to curl up on the couch with some hot coffee and a novel called The Immigrants? Um, she says that they're terrific, and in fact, she's enjoyed the whole series. So, I don't know, I'm already getting in the mood for cooler weather now. So, anyway, that was one I wanted to mention to you folks with some Swedish ancestry. Oh, and I have to say a big thank you to Anna Corinne for featuring my podcast on her latest podcast, episode number 10. My Swedish and European audience is growing, and I thank her very much for being such a wonderful supporter. In her episode 10, she even gives a wonderful, authentic Swedish recipe for a summer lunch, and it sounded really yummy, so you might want to check that out. Okay, I can't start thinking about food because we have our first gem coming up, and we're going to be doing a little genealogical channel surfing. This week, I want to take a few moments to take you on a tour of some of the new features on the Genealogy Gems TV page. So if you're not driving in the car, um, if you're at your computer, go to www.genealogygems.tv and click on the videos button um, to get to Genealogy Gems TV. You can also, you'll notice that there is a television set that says Genealogy Gems TV up in the upper right-hand corner, and you can click on that as well. It'll take you to the page. What I've done was um, to take a collection of some of my favorite videos, at least just to kind of get us started. I plan on adding a lot more in the future, and I've categorized them. Uh, The first section is comedies, and in comedies, you will actually find the Our Summer Vacation video where I managed to be quite silly and make a fool of myself. And so you'll see me there on that one. That's the one that, uh, that Roots Television has been highlighting as well. And the second one that is personally one of my all-time favorites, uh, the video is called Family Tree Part 1. And there is another one called Family Tree Part 2. These are starring Julie Andrews, oh, one of my favorite actresses, and Gene Kelly um, from Singing in the Rain fame. And this is an, actually an excerpt. In fact, I'm going to click on it here because I want to take a look at it. This is an excerpt from the Julie Andrews show from 1965. And this is really a beautiful, elaborate production number that they did. And 
I mean, we don't know whether these are really their ancestors or not, but the two of them sing and interact and do a little bit of comedy and a little bit of seriousness. And they have this beautiful um, set behind them that is supposed to represent their family tree. And as they kind of travel through the family tree, they each play the characters of their great grandparents and great aunts and uncles and all that. And it is just a blast. Just think if you're a Lincoln, how you'd be congratulated if on this day were someone you could claim. To clear on any history, just check your family history. Genealogy is the name of the game. Now some ancestors you'll find. Well, genealogy is the name of the game. The uh, Julie and Jean are singing, and um, I think that you'll really enjoy these two videos. Gosh, it brings back memories, doesn't it? <laughs> from the television, from a different era. Also in the comedy section, you will find A Son's Tale. And um, this one is by a friend of mine. He's a director down in Hollywood named Chris Regazzo, and he does the funniest take on kind of a, a Ken Burns type documentary. When you first watch it, well, I don't know, maybe you just have to check it out. Uh, just keep in mind, this guy's a jokester. So um, <laughs> it's not all serious, but boy, it is a really funny, clever take on um, telling one's family story. And I've included one um, that's actually from a show called Family Guy. You can tell I have teenagers in my house. They all watch The Family Guy. And, um, but this one I, I had to do. You know, it's funny. I get these emails in the morning. I get up in the morning and my daughter's been on, you know, the internet the night before. And she's emailing me these, you got to watch this. You got to watch that video. These are hysterical. Well, this one's called Fast Talking High Trousers. And it is particularly funny because... Nowadays, of course, the kids just freak if, you know, you have your pants, you know, at least three inches below your belly button, if not, you know, higher than that. Uh, they just think that that's just outrageous. And, and of course, back in the days when I was a teenager, you know, all of our jeans were high waisted. Well, back in the 40s, you know, there's the joke about Fred Mertz on um, I Love Lucy. Well, that was the 50s where he had the high pants. And uh, Nickelodeon used to do a kind of a comedy commercial about uh, Fred Mertz's pants, you know, <laughs> taking over the world. Well, this is kind of a spoof more on kind of the film noir 1940s movies. Um, and I just thought it was funny. It's not particularly family history, but it might bring back some some humorous memories. And also under comedies, again, this one's not family history, but it certainly is podcasting. And it's called Ask a Ninja. What is podcasting? Now, you may or may not be familiar with kind of the whole culture of the videos that are out there on YouTube. I know a lot of the the teens and the 20-somethings, you know, they watch these things religiously. And they have what's called viral videos, which really just means that they spread. People love them and they are constantly emailing them to their friends and their family and sharing these videos. And some become really popular. Well, Ask a Ninja is right up there at the top. The guy's actually really funny. And um, what really struck me about this video was I feel like that sometimes when I'm trying to explain to people what podcasting is, because for some people, they've never heard of it before. And um, anyway, he does kind of a funny spoof on trying to explain what is podcasting. So if you've had any doubts about that, you need to go check out that video. Now, moving on to the documentaries section, this one I'm just getting started on. Um, and the first two that you'll find there are a nurse in training, which were um, some of my um, first attempts at putting together kind of a documentary style family history video. These two videos tell the story of my grandmother, Alfreda Sporin. Um, she had graduated from high school around, hmm, I should know this off the top of my head, but I think it was 1929. And by 1930, she was in nurses training. And this is kind of her story. In fact, you may recognize several of the images because uh, back in episode 13, where I was talking about creating family history books, the one that I use as an example is a book about the same story. In fact, the book came first, and then I realized that I would love to try to make it come to life. And I took the text and the images and then created these two videos. So um, hopefully you will enjoy them, particularly if you have some nurses uh, in your family. 
Also, there is the San Francisco 1906 earthquake footage. And we talked about this in an earlier podcast as well when talking about uh, the impact of that earthquake and, and how world events oftentimes really severely impact our ability to trace our family history because of the effect on the records in, in those areas. Anyway, this is a really unique one. We also talked about this video in the podcast about silent movies. Um, I was talking to Sam Gill, the archivist. Uh, he used to be with the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences. I think I said that right. <laughs> and he was talking about how they just basically put a camera on the front of this trolley and went down Market Street. Um, so it's really a, a very early um, footage, and it's a, what they call an actuality, which is not edited. Uh, it's not cut from different angles and that type of thing. It was just put the camera on there and start rolling. And it's fascinating to watch the pedestrians and the other cars and the traffic and all the chaos going on in those early days of the automobile. The next section that you'll find, and, and all of these are listed on that first page under Genealogy Gems TV. I have a little uh, Genealogy Gems TV guide there, you'll find. And the next section is research. I've got two up there to start, and one of them I really like. It's a library genealogy tour done at Arlington Heights Memorial Library. And it is a cute little idea. I'm not even going to tell you what they do, because it took me a second to realize who this gentleman was taking on the tour. And it's really a cute, tongue-in-cheek kind of a tour of not just the Arlington Heights Memorial Library, but it's a great introduction to anybody who's pretty new to genealogy and new to the whole experience of how to really get the most out of a visit to the library, as well as just kind of seeing what's available in general to the family historian. So if, uh, if you're fairly new to genealogy or if you perhaps want to interest somebody else who is thinking about re doing some research, this would be a neat video to share with them just to, to kind of uh, have some fun while breaking the ice with the idea of doing family history. The second one is called Tracing Your Roots. It's done by Good Morning America. And uh, it's a real touching video about people who have gone overseas and tried to go to the homeland of some of their ancestors. It will definitely pull at your heartstrings. And I know for me, it just motivated me to want to get on a plane. And I've got a whole list of places that I would love to visit. Um, but it's a wonderful video. And of course, I have to include a section on silent movies. As you know, that's a, a passion of mine. And I, I love it from the historical aspect of just seeing in moving pictures a time that normally we don't see. You know, silent movies are not something that gets shown on a regular basis at all anymore. I, I'm sure there are many, many young people who've never seen one. But what's fascinating is when you do watch them, you realize, wow, these are like the photographs of my grandparents and my great grandparents, but they're kind of coming to life and seeing the hairstyles and the clothing styles and just kind of the morality of the day and how they decorated their homes and what, you know, downtown cities looked like. I kind of look at them from that perspective. Well, I've got some of my favorites on there. Uh, one of them is Harold Lloyd's Safety Last. As I mentioned before, if you only have one movie to go see that's a silent movie, start with that one. He is the... Uh, the guy next door, you know, with the horn rimmed glasses and getting into scrapes, and but very clever. I mean, Harold Lloyd was really a, a filmmaker, filmmaking genius. And I've included after the safety last video one called The Third Genius. It's a portion, about a 10 minute portion, of a documentary about Harold Lloyd. And I included it because he does actually talk about how they pulled off some of the, the visual tricks that you will see in, this, in the Safety Last video. So that's really fun. And of course, I have to include Mary Pickford. She's my f personal favorite. She's really uh, the first actress that I kind of actively pursued watching her films. I just, I love them. I've included um, excerpts from Daddy Long Legs. And as I think, I don't know if I mentioned it to you before, but that was actually a precursor to one of the Shirley Temple movies. In fact, several of Mary Pickford's early silent movies were remade into big blockbusters for Shirley Temple, as well as um, she did Pollyanna, which I have a, an excerpt from Pollyanna on the website. And it's a silent film. And of course, that was obviously made into a very popular film by Disney. I think that was in the 60s with Haley Mills. 
And there's actually a cute little one. I don't even know if this is from an actual movie or if this was some little demo tape they did or whatever, but it's called Mary and the Cat. <laughs> it's just kind of a wild, silly, ridiculous clip, but she looks adorable and, and the cat's kind of crazy. So that's kind of fun. And I've also included a couple of film clips from Douglas Fairbanks. And as you may or may not know, Mary Pickford actually ended up marrying Douglas Fairbanks. He was the original Harrison Ford. <laughs> you know, he was just this swashbuckling action hero, comedian, and romantic lead. It's funny, even today when I attend the silent movies, when they show a Douglas Fairbanks movie, the place is packed, and particularly the women are cheering, and he's just amazing. So the first one I've got is 1924's The Thief of Baghdad, to give you a, a glimpse of that movie, and the other one is Zorro, before Antonio Banderas, there was Douglas Fairbanks, and he was terrific, and his Zorro has a real comedic flair to him that is surprising. I mean, I found it surprising as I was watching the movie. And I've got links on how to find all those movies and everything for the full length versions. But I thought you would really enjoy um, getting some, some quick tastes of, of some of that wonderful silent film era footage. And coming down the road, I'm going to have an international section, I'm going to include some of those favorite videos I've mentioned in the past about Germany, as well as England. And I actually just found a couple on Sweden. We were talking about Swedish uh, history. So I'm going to have a couple of Swedish films. So those are coming up. Um, if you come across a favorite video, email it to me. I would love to take a look at it and see if we might want to include it on the website for everybody to enjoy. Again, that's kind of the, the viral aspect, as the kids say, of videos and using YouTube. And again, if you're not familiar with YouTube. I do have an episode all about YouTube. And it really isn't just for the teens anymore. There are a lot of family history videos and genealogy related video clips on there. And it's a wonderful way when you find something that you like that kind of strikes a nerve, you can very easily from the website, email it to your friends and your family. So if you see something there that you like that you think would be of interest to all the rest of the listeners, just shoot me an email at genealogy gems podcast at gmail.com. And I'd love to take a look at it. You know, I've put those genealogy videos on the website for your viewing pleasure. And family history has never looked so good. And speaking of never looking so good. I have a proposal for you listeners out there. You know, a lot of folks, particularly older folks, just can't see themselves listening to a podcast or even kind of grasping the concept of it or using an iPod. And they are missing out on so much, don't you think? Well, I think that you podcast pioneers out there, you know, you're the first ones to take the plunge to figure out how to listen to the podcast and how the subscriptions work. I'll bet that you're a good looking group. And I want to show other family historians out there that people just like them are taking advantage of the new resources out there. And certainly podcasts are some of the newest in family history. Besides, I want to get a look at you guys. So here's my proposal. Take a picture of yourself listening to your computer or listening to your iPod and email it to me at genealogygemspodcast at gmail.com. You can make it funny. You can make it serious. Uh, you can hold up a sign saying that you're listening to the show or what you think of it. Whatever you want to do is fine with me. Just uh, include your name and let me know in the email if it's okay to use your name or if you would rather be a mysterious genealogist, then I won't include your name with the photo. But I'd love to have a listener page on the website and let folks see what an awesome audience I have and that anyone and everyone can listen to audio podcasts. So that's your assignment for this week. Get that camera out, take a picture of yourself listening to your iPod and email it in. So let the emailing begin. Well, that's about it for this week's episode. I think you've got enough to do and certainly enough to look at on the website and pictures to take and you've got your assignments. So thank you so much for spending some of your valuable time with me this week talking about our favorite subject genealogy. Have a wonderful week. And I will talk to you soon. 